Welcome to another episode of Talk and Shop. We're coming to you live from Columbus. Um, got my buddy Ashby Daniels here, came over from Pittsburgh. I came over from Indy. Columbus is about halfway. I think you had a little bit longer drive than I did though, didn't you? Yeah, about just over three hours, three, almost three and a half hours. So, so yeah, so we got together. Uh, we're in a study group together, but we've gotten to know each other off of Twitter and just to kind of talk about our businesses, what's going on in the industry. It's always great to meet up in person and you know, two and a half, three hours isn't too bad of a drive. So we've had a great conversation. Uh, we're done with coffee. We're going to go grab some lunch next, but not before we did an episode in. So Ashby is the uh, retirement expert, I would say. Um, you may not know it all yet, but you Certainly should. Certainly the goal. Yeah, so, so since Ashby's all about retirement, that's where he plays most of the time, I thought we would cover some uh, retirement mistakes. So we talked about beforehand what we might want to cover. We decided on what's the biggest mistake people make going into retirement. So I will let you go first since you're the guest. Sure. So you know, I think as a general rule, one of the, one of the things I see a lot from prospective clients and retirees is the idea that uh, the conventional wisdom of getting really conservative really early uh, in retirement can be certainly a mistake. And what I mean by that is that the retirement landscape is, has evolved a lot without the conventional wisdom evolving much at all. And what I mean by that is the conventional wisdom being that clients tend to be really fixed income dominant uh, moving into retirement. Even the rule of thumb of how much equity should you have in your portfolio will you know, take your take your age from 100 and that's how much you should have in equities. Well, the problem is that as a general rule, the retirement landscape has evolved a lot. So 30 years ago, the last, the last kind of generation of retirees that are uh, you know, certainly a good bit older now, when they retired, they had uh, you know, interest rates of, treasury interest rates were between seven to eight percent and they didn't know this at the time, but they were about to experience one of the great bull markets of all time. Mm -hmm. And then here today, not to mention the fact that that, that generation of retirees also had uh, a big pension right. in a lot of cases. Now you have a quarter, only a quarter of retirees have a pension and you have treasury interest rates of between two to 3%. So back then you could withdraw 4% from your fixed income portfolio, still maintain, still keep up with inflation and do it conservatively. Mm -hmm. Well, now where we are today, you have two to three percent interest rates and no pension. Right. So if you want to have any chance whatsoever of your portfolio and your income keeping up with inflation, it's going to be really, really, really difficult, perhaps pie in the sky, to have a retirement portfolio that looks like it used to look. So one idea is to change the way that you look at your portfolio. So instead of looking at your portfolio as one single number, to look at it as perhaps two different portfolios with two different purposes. So obviously the big risk going into retirement is, is basically having a market correction or a market recession right as you retire. So retiring right now. Potentially, <laughs> right? So I mean, we're at the start of what could be a bear market. It could turn right back around as we well know. I mean. The market has a way of disappointing the greatest number of people, so I don't know if that's going to be the case or not. And I would encourage, really, I don't think anybody should have that, this is what's going to happen because I don't think any of us know. Um, I think anybody that's honest with themselves knows that they don't know. So I think, but the idea is to have a plan for when that happens. So if that were, if you were retiring today, having a certain portion of your assets um, and obviously that number is different for everybody, so I'm not making any recommendations of how many years that should last, but to have a scenario where you have your rainy day fund, your safety net fund, in some, and what are my opinion, high quality short-term bonds, so that way you're not interest rate sensitive, too bad, I mean certainly everything's interest rate sensitive to a degree, but kind of decrease your interest rate sensitivity, but at the same time giving yourself a safety net of a certain number of years of income that you may need in retirement, and then leaving the rest in what you, in equities, which should, you know, the great companies of America and the world. So that's what I call them anyway, is instead of thinking about the stock market, which moves at its, you know, at a moment's notice seemingly with no coherent direction, if you think of it as grow, you know, investing in the great companies of America and the world, you might be a little bit more apt to stick with it. So I think thinking of your por retirement portfolio as two different, two different portfolios with two distinct purposes, I think could really, help retirees to uh, hopefully stick with their plan a little bit more. And you've written about this before. I'll make sure to find that article and link in the show notes below. 
Um, that was going to be my initial one was don't get too conservative. I mean, similar reasons with some other things is we're living longer. So, you know, at 30 years, 40 years, you weren't worried about investing when you started your career because you had 30 years ahead of yourself. Well, part of your portfolio, if you're retiring today, has another 30 years ahead. So you still have that same time horizon you were comfortable with when you were younger. It's just now we think we retired, we need all this money today. Well, well no. So definitely in the camp of having money partitioned out more short term. Um, I use a tactical strategy with my retirees, which can increase that level depending on what the markets are doing. So that's another portfolio strategy you can go, but definitely think you need to have equities for the long term. I think a, a part of retirement plan that gets overlooked because it's not in the books and it's not on a, an actual retirement plan is optimism, kind of what you alluded to. If you think that these big companies of the world are going to be around for the next 30 years, <laughs> which I think they are, and if the alternative being that the largest corporations across the globe fail, then I don't think it matters where your money is. If it was all in bonds, chances are if Apple and all the biggest companies in the world fail, governments are failing, those bonds are defaulted on, it doesn't matter where your money's at. So you've got to have some optimism and be realistic about what's going to happen over the long term. Give yourself that income like you described in the short term to ride out November and December and January this year. And, and it's okay. So definitely agree with that. Mine was going to be, um, and you talked about this as well before we started recording, having a plan and not a necessarily a financial plan, but an income plan. And without getting into too many of the details, but just having a structure for how you're going to take your money out. Now, some people, you only have a 401k. Probably not a lot of planning that you can have, but if you've been planning and working with an advisor or if you're young thinking for the long term, you could have a variety of accounts that give you flexibility in retirement. So you could have a Roth IRA to combine with your 401k, you have a taxable account, you have cash on hand, and given different circumstances, different tax years, where do you take the money to be the most efficient? Having a plan in place can help out, and that can make a big impact over the long term. It sounds minor, but minimizing your taxes and taking from certain accounts at a certain time um, can really help out the portfolio, stretching it out over the long term. And you could even get into placing your investments in certain accounts, but that's getting too far into the weeds. So mine is having a plan for your income that you set aside as Ashby described so that you can have the equities to grow for the long term. So we kind of we kind of complimented each other. That was pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. And, and putting those strategies together so that, you know, even within your, uh, you know, kind of, I call it a two bucket approach, but, you know, having some tax diversification among both buckets so that way you can always withdraw. You always have the availability to withdraw from whatever is the most tax efficient or tax pre preferred at that moment to, you know, account for taxes and then uh, and then ongoing legacy discussions as well. So, so definitely uh, agree. I think they work together nicely. So that worked out. But before we wrap up, I like to throw my guests a curveball. So you didn't know I was going to ask this, <laughs> but I think you'd be capable to answer. What are you most excited for in 2019? Personal, business, whatever it might be. But what are you most excited for? Um, that's a good question. So. Um, you know, I'd have to say I, I, I like the evolution of the industry. You know, we've had a, we've had a lot of really great discussion today already about uh, you know the direction of the industry, and you know, so I have to say that certainly more more meetings like this. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I hadn't met Justin in person today. We've obviously had an, an awful lot of discussions. Uh, you know, we're not done phone, yet. Traditional. Uh, more traditional ways of communication, but uh, it doesn't get any more traditional than face to face. So I'd say probably more of these meetings is probably what I'm most excited about for 20, 2019. Sounds good. So tell everybody where they can find you, Twitter handle, blog, all that stuff. I'll link to it below, uh, but let them know where they can find yeah, you. Yeah, so my Twitter handle is uh, at Daniels Ashby, dot, or at Daniels Ashby, and uh, my website is retirementfieldguide.com. And that's pretty much uh, on Facebook. If you're if you're interested, uh, look for Pittsburgh Retirement Planner. So uh, but you can certainly find all that on the website. And I'll have links below. But I told you he's the retirement guy. Everything he's doing is named on retirement. That's it. One so, and only thing. So that, there you go. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, I've got another episode recording this Friday, so we're gonna have a lot of content for you, video early in the new year. So thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to everything, uh, and we'll see you in the next episode.